If you spray perfume or deodorant, or release some other type of smell in the corner of a room, you know that someone on the other side of the room will eventually smell it, but only after a while. Why? Because of diffusion. Diffusion is when particles spread out, and they do this because they can move, obviously, and if any particles are left to their own devices, they'll diffuse from where there's a high concentration of particles, that means there's a lot in a certain amount of space or volume, to where there's a low concentration. Here's some Minecraft sheep to demonstrate. We can say that particles move down the concentration gradient on their own. We use the word gradient because it's like a ball on a hill, it will roll down the hill by itself. The particles spread out until the concentration is the same everywhere, and the whole room semi-stinks. We say that the system has reached equilibrium, nothing else will happen for now. As an aside, the hotter it is, the quicker this happens, as the particles have more kinetic energy and move faster. This is why you can smell a cooked chicken from across a house, but not a raw one. Diffusion is one of the most important things that happens in biology, as it's a way to make sure that things are nice and balanced in your body. You probably know that the surface of your cells is called the cell membrane, but what you might not know is that it's semi-permeable. If something's permeable, it just means that things can go through it. But the membrane on your cells is semi-permeable, as it lets some things pass through it, but not others, due to the holes in it being very small. It does depend on the type of cell, but generally, water particles and molecules can pass through, but bigger molecules such as glucose and salts can't. We'll talk about how they get in later on. You see, these nutrients are all dissolved in water in your body, we say they're in solution. If there's not many glucose molecules in solution in one of your cells, we say it's a low concentration. It might be helpful to think of it like this. If you have a low concentration of glucose, that means a high concentration of water. Now, we never use the term concentration of water, but it might help you to understand what happens next. Outside the cell, there might be a higher concentration of glucose, and we can think of that being a low concentration of water, but don't tell anyone. Because of diffusion, these particles will move to balance the concentrations inside and outside of the cell. The glucose molecules will try to move from the high concentration outside to the low concentration inside, that is, down the concentration gradient, but that doesn't happen. Why? Because the holes are too small. The membrane is only semi-permeable. So what happens? The water moves instead. It moves out, diffuses out of the cell, to increase the amount of water outside, therefore reducing the glucose concentration to make it balanced with the inside. Naturally, water would enter the cell if there was a higher glucose concentration inside the cell. Water moves to dilute the higher concentration of glucose or whatever other nutrient we're looking at. On the left we have the inside of a cell, outside of the cell on the right. If the sheep are water, water sheep if you will, the horses are the glucose molecules. The horses are too big to fit through the holes in the fence between, but the water sheep can move out. This movement of water in and out of cells is called osmosis. Any particles can diffuse, but we call it osmosis when it's water doing it. Incidentally, this is why you shouldn't overwater your plants. If you do, it lowers the concentration of nutrients outside of the root hair cells, meaning that water moves into them too much and the cells can become turgid and explode. Something similar can happen to us too. For example, some illegal drugs are dangerous because they make you feel so thirsty that you start drinking loads. Too much water can move into the cells, say in your brain, and make them expand, make them turgid. And if your brain swells up, that can be fatal. And that's also why you shouldn't drink distilled water. See if you can explain why. Drink too little, of course, and the concentration of glucose and other nutrients will be so high outside of your cells that water will move out to balance the concentration, the cells become flaccid, and you become dehydrated. These are some extreme cases. Thankfully, our bodies are very good at regulating water levels, though, thanks to the kidneys. So the main thing to remember is that water always moves to dilute the higher concentration. Now there is a practical for this, and it seems to be one that confuses people a lot. I'm going to run through it really quickly, but if you want to see it done for real, watch Dr. Chip on Marsbury Education. Step 1. Bore out equal sized cylinders from a potato or another vegetable of your choice, and cut them all to the same length. Making them the same size and shape means they have the same surface area for osmosis to happen across. Remove any skin, because it's not permeable, water can't pass through it, and dry them off briefly with some paper towel. If there's excess water on the surface, you won't get an accurate measurement of their mass. Step 2. Weigh them to find their mass with a top pan balance. If you're using a weighing boat, don't forget to zero or tear the balance before you put the potato in. Step 3. 
Place the cylinders in different concentration solutions of glucose or something else, say zero moles per decimeter cubed, that's just distilled water, going up in 0.2s all the way to 0.8 moles per decimeter cubed, let's say. Leave them for a fair amount of time, a few hours to say a day. Step four, remove the cylinders and dry them again. Not too much though, as water could move out of the cells while you're doing this, reducing the measurement of the true mass. Weigh them again and record the masses. Step five, calculate the change in mass by doing final mass take away initial mass and then turn this into a percentage change in mass. Any percentage change is the change divided by the initial value times 100. We do this because all of our cylinders will have been slightly different sizes and masses, so working with percentages takes care of that to an extent. Step six, plot a graph of percentage change in mass against concentration of solution. If a cylinder increased in mass, that's a positive change, above zero, water must have moved into the cells to balance a higher concentration of glucose than the solution it was in. If it's a negative change in mass, water's moved out, so that must mean the concentration was higher outside of the cells. If we draw a straight line of best fit through, it crosses the x-axis. This tells us what the concentration of solution would have had to have been such that the mass didn't change at all. And that can only happen if the glucose concentration inside the potato cells was the same as outside. So that's what we can find out from this experiment, the concentration of glucose inside the cells of a potato. And we can say that the variables are these. The independent variable is the concentration of solution. Dependent variable is the percentage change in mass of potato cylinders. Controls are same size and shape of cylinders, the temperature, volume of solutions used, and the time they're left for. So wait, if cell membranes are only semi-permeable, how do salts and sugars get in? Our cells do need them after all. Introducing active transport. The cell membrane has little chemical gates called carrier proteins that will grab hold of a molecule and push it into or out of a cell. It's called active transport because it requires energy to happen, unlike diffusion and osmosis, which we say are passive. They just happen of their own accord. They don't need energy. Because it's active, it can move particles up or against the concentration gradient. That would be like me picking up a horse and forcing him over to the other side where there's already a load of them, a high concentration. It's like pushing a ball back up a hill. It takes energy. This is especially useful for plants as there's usually a fairly low concentration of minerals in the soil compared to inside the root hair cells, but plants need lots. They can't diffuse in because they have to move up the concentration gradient. Thankfully, active transport is there to help and the cells use some energy to move them through the membrane to the already higher concentration. So I hope you found that helpful. If you did, please leave a like and comment down below if you have any ideas of what video I could make next. See you next time.